Perfect. Well, thank you so much to everyone on the call today. We're really excited to award Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center with the Five Star Hospital Award. So I wanted to kick us off by doing some introductions from the patient safety movement side and then get the two of you to introduce yourselves. So Dave, I will start with you. Thanks, Sarah. And I too am very excited to be here today. My name is Dave Mayer. I am the uh, CEO of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation and I also serve as the Executive Director of the MedStar Institute for Quality and Safety. Ariana. Thanks, Dave. Um, pleasure to be with you all virtually today. We wish it was in person, but I'm Ariana Longley. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation and really excited to be presenting you this award today. Great. And my name is Sarah Miller. I am the Director of Partnerships here at the Patient Safety Movement. And again, just very excited to award you all with this um, lovely award. And I will pass it over to Dr. Blake. Thank you. Uh, I also wish we could be in person, but uh, I'm George Blake. I'm a physician anesthesiologist and the chief quality officer for the Dartmouth-Hitchcock uh, Medical Center, as well as our health system. And I am Lori Key. I am the associate chief quality officer for Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center and uh, uh, direct our safety program. Great. Great to have everybody here today virtually. Uh, wanted to do this in person last March, but as we know, the pandemic has is, is changed our lives dramatically. And, and so it was very important for us to still do this presentation today with you virtually. Uh, a little bit about the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. We were founded in 2012 by a, a true leader and vision, visionary, Joe Chiani who had worked in healthcare around technology efforts and, and just heard too many stories about families losing loved ones, be it a child, a spouse, a grandparent, due to things that were preventable. And, and Joe just out of, I think, frustration said, we've got to do something about it. And he formed the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. His vision was zero preventable deaths by 2020. And as, any of you know, people challenged him on that and said, how could you, it's impossible, you can't get zero deaths. And Joe said, why not? One is just too many. We can't settle for anything but zero. And so with that platform, the organization was launched. And two of the things that I've loved, I was there pretty much at the beginning with the organization. One, that urgency. I felt that the patient safety and, you know, domain was lacking a true urgency to drive to zero preventable harm. And Joe putting his, his neck out there, so to speak, and saying, no, we've got to put this line in the sand, created that urgency that I thought people rose up and worked harder towards that goal. And the second was from the beginning, Joe engaged the patient and family voice in everything the Patient Safety Movement Foundation does. They are on committees, they are on panels, they direct us and help us drive to that zero preventable harm goal. And so those things have just been our passion and our commitment through the years. We produce programs that educate, that inform, that raise awareness. We've created what are called actionable patient safety solutions. And I'll talk a little bit more about the great work that Dr. Hitchcock did around those actionable patient safety solutions. But these are evidence-based toolkits put together by international leaders in all the different safety domains, be it medication error, be it respiratory failure, be it hospital acquired infections. And the Patient Safety Movement Foundation gives these out free to hospitals all around the world. We work with over 48 hundred hospitals across the world in 48 countries. And finally, I just want to talk about our Unite for Safe Care campaign that just, you know, continues to go on, but really had a great day and week during the week of the World Patient Safety Day on September 17th, between almost a four-hour virtual program with celebrities and politicians and safety experts and families and patients sharing stories it was educating, it was enlightening, it was emotional, and 
Currently, we believe over 10,000 people have tuned in and watched that program. We also did a walk from Freedom Plaza to the Capitol building where we placed 2,000 orange flags, each flag in memory of 100 patients or caregivers who died from preventable death. And the visual was amazing. We had some congressional leaders come down. We had media there. So those are the ways we try to raise awareness while helping hospitals and health systems in preventable death missions and stuff. Um, I'll stop there with a little bit of the organization and the background, but we're here to honor Dartmouth Hitchcock and all the great work they've done. The organization under Joe's leadership created what was called a five-star hospital award. And this is a very prestigious award. Uh, only a handful of hospitals and health systems around the world have been awarded this. And it takes true commitment. The hospitals have to commit to using evidence-based medicine everywhere patient safety and patient harm occurs. And Dart Dartmouth Hitchcock took that challenge and said, we are going to implement these apps. We are going to go forth and you went and implemented 18 of them, which qualify for 24 total points towards a safer healthcare system. And we just want to celebrate that. We just want to say thank you because we know that commitment and implementation of those evidence-based practices has truly saved lives within your health system. So again, thank you so much. And we wanted to do this award while we we're in March at the summit, but we get to virtually give it to you today. So I, I will hand over the award and I hope you accept it with the just great work that you've done to earn it. Thank you. Here you go, George. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much. It's, uh, we're so proud to be here today to accept this award. On behalf of our organization, and it's the organization and the people in it that have really done the hard work uh, to allow us to be able to be ambitious in our goals and setting um, ourselves up to be able to be successful in creating what we hope is really sustainable improvement in, in, in all the areas that uh, we um, undertook under the safety movement. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the summary and the background that you provided, uh, David. The, the fact is what attracted us to entering into this program and taking on these challenges was uh, it's so aligned with uh, our, our fundamentals uh, as an organization. You know, Dartmouth's always been uh, committed to putting patients first, really believing deeply that the team, the entire team in the broadest sense of all of the different roles um, are what's needed to get the best uh, the best care and the best outcome. And then being humble and appreciating that we don't have all the answers, uh, but we have to be ready to learn, ready to see who's doing things better. And the fact that the international participants had put together these packages of best practices that were evidence-based, uh, why wouldn't you want to do this? Uh, so uh, we were excited to participate uh, it really does highlight some phenomenal work that's been done uh, really over decades uh, by so many in our organization. And I'm just so proud of uh, the work that it represents and the achievements. And I'm, and I'm probably most proud of something that uh, folks may not be aware of is, you know, as, as lofty as the goal of zero deaths, zero preventable deaths by 2020, um, and as you were saying that, it just occurred to me that we recently presented to our top leaders who charged us with zero harm uh, and, and zero deaths at Dartmouth. We actually have achieved, using a very rigorous methodology of measuring serious safety events, uh, no deaths, no preventable deaths due to uh, safety events uh, this year. Uh, and we're actually pushing two years on that. Uh, and that wasn't the case a decade ago, and it certainly wasn't even the case five years ago. So um, I, I think 
bold goals are critically important. Uh, again, uh, very honored uh, to receive this award, very uh, pleased to be part of this movement and um, be committed to a group that's really got the philosophy of all teach, all learn, and uh, all improving when it comes to uh, patient safety, not competing. So the, the spirit of sharing and learning and, and growth and improvement is, uh, again, exactly uh, where we are as an organization. And, and again, very honored. And, uh, and thank you so much for what you do and the, the, the fact that you facilitate this. It really makes something that would be um, unavailable uh, to organizations, even well-positioned uh, academic medical centers like our, ourselves. The, the learning comes from all over and it's not always the biggest, most famous place. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you. Like for Ariana, Sarah and I, this is one of our favorite things we do in our job is the ability to recognize and you truly are an elite healthcare system. And I'm so happy you talked about zero and what you've accomplished over the last year using your defined metrics. We both have been in the safety world a long time and we've heard from so many people, well, zero isn't achievable and we do great things in healthcare, but it's not without risk. And so we've got to accept that sometimes people are gonna get harmed preventably. And you're a great example of saying no. We, we don't have to accept anything but zero. We've seen this in one of our other five-star hospitals, Children's Hospital of California, CHOC, and, and the work they've done. And we see this in ventilator-associated pneumonias and the Keystone Project with central line infections. People always said, no, you can't get to zero, and yet we are getting to zero in those categories. We may not know the answers today on everything and C. diff and some of the other, challenges, but we will figure it out and we will have those solutions. So that's the only number we accept at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. And, and, and thank you for all that great work you're doing over the last year or two. Thank you very much. It's been delightful for us to have access to your tools and help on your uh, website using the apps and uh, really um, being able now to be able to share some of those things with our member hospitals as well, so we can continue to push out the improvement. We look forward to continued great partnership with you, collaboration, learning together, commitments together, um, and really sharing your great work so others could see that zero is achievable. So thank you everyone. I hope to be able to see you in person hopefully in the near future, but please stay safe and uh, continue the great work you're doing. So thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. And we'd love to have you if you get this neck of the woods. It was a beautiful week. Uh, we just passed our peak uh, fall foliage. So, uh, so if, if you're out this way, please uh, look us up. I definitely will because I have to do a trip up to New York and Boston to hit two more baseball parks in my virtual walk across America. <laughs> definitely take you up on that. All right. That's good. Thank you so much, everyone. Great Thank work. you, Sarah. Thank you.